Hello, everybody. I'm here with a dear friend of mine. He likes to travel as much as I do, but I want mm -hmm. him to introduce himself. How are you today, my dear friend? Um, very well. Uh, how are you? I'm awesome. Could you tell everybody who you are? Where yes. are you from? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, well, my name is Gabriel, and I was born in northern Spain. Mm -hmm. I was born in a little town close to France. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm in France right now. I'm in yeah. Paris at the, at the moment. Yes. But I usually live between um, Spain, and it's true that I spend a lot of time in the U.S. Mm -hmm. I, I lived in the U.S. for 16 years. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I decided to come back to Spain because, for many reasons actually, but mm -hmm. um, I wanted to study film at the time and studying film in the U.S. was mm -hmm. very pricey. So I decided to come back to Madrid where it's pricey but not as much. Mm -hmm. And I do travel a lot. It's true that I've lived over the years. I've lived, I've lived in Lisbon. I, I lived in Lisbon for a year. Uh, I've, I lived in Paris for two years. Mm -hmm. uh, I've lived in Madrid for 12 years, mm -hmm. LA, and then my hometown, which is Guernica, which is a tiny town by the coast in awesome. the north of Spain. Awesome. How have you started teaching English and why? Um, because um, I... Uh, well, truth be told, is I'm good at languages. Mm -hmm. uh, that is one thing. It's true that I was, uh, uh, when I was uh, 14, I went to America for the first time. Yes. And I did a whole school year. Then mm -hmm. uh, many, many years later, I graduated in business administration. One of those things that you do that you say, okay, I'm doing this degree. I don't know if I'll ever use it. Mm -hmm. um, and then after living for so many years in the U.S., and it's true mm -hmm. that that is one part of me. Another part of me is that I've been an English student for many years. And as a student, you learn the language. Uh, you learn the, the rules of the language. Mm -hmm. So then when I came back from America, I decided to start teaching, even though at the time, I didn't have any background teaching. I had background learning, but not teaching. And of course, through books, through experience, through, through thousands of classes, you get, I want to say, you get better at it. Um, and uh, of course, being a student for so many years, you do kind of uh, get or know what kind of teacher you want to be. You remember the good ones. Of course, you also remember the bad ones. And you say, well, I don't want to do that. Uh, you know, I want to be like this one. And um, what things you enjoy in class, the types of examples that you enjoy in class. Um, that's why when I became a teacher, of course, I try my students to walk away with as much knowledge as possible as possible but at the same time i want everybody to have a good experience you know that there's things that in uh, you know that in english there's for example i'll give you an example i suppose that for brazilian people it's the same thing but i'm not sure but for example phrasal verbs when you start teaching phrasal verbs nobody likes them nobody likes them because sure. in spanish they don't make sense they just don't it's like okay what are you telling me a verb and a preposition, and then depending on the preposition, the, the meaning is different. It's crazy. So I know that is hard, but again, I try to make it as fun mm -hmm. yeah. as I can without being a comedy show, because it's not a comedy show. It's, a, it's an English class. Yeah, he's multi-talented for sure. The work that you do on social media is flawless. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Uh, it's... I, uh, I think you're too kind. That is, it's a fact. Uh, mm -hmm. But I try to make, well, what I was telling you, um, for yeah. example, let's go to an example. When they teach you a phrasal verb and they, they tell you, okay, um, to get over. And then they tell you to get over, the meaning is uh, to get over, is to recover from. But then how do, you, how do you use it? Because, of course, many times, okay, I know that to get over is re to recover 
to get on is to have a relationship with, to get up is to, but then how do you use it? So I try to make examples of a very normal sentence in English using it, how native people use uh, phrasal verbs. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, for example, that's an example. Why have you decided to teach English that way? The way that you teach in a simpler way, like everyday English, let's say so. I try to cover uh, all the aspects of the language. And I, I'm aware that some of them are more fun than others. I know. For example, when you teach, um, when you teach a, a new expression, can be fun. Okay, how do you say that? Well, you know, um, to see eye to eye, that is to agree. I don't see, my brother and I do not see eye to eye when it comes to politics, for example. Uh, and of course, there are other things that are a little drier and oof, tedious. Uh, but the thing is, I want to make uh, yeah, short video, useful tips, useful tips. It's true, I've decided, I don't know if it's going to be very popular, but every so often to make kind of a recap of things that we've seen in the past. So instead of the videos being just one minute, make them a little uh, longer so that people actually, oh yeah, yeah, we saw that. People are, not people is, uh, things like that. Uh, but in general, the walking is because well, I don't know why the walking is mm -hmm. really, because I'm a, I'm a nervous person. So sometimes yeah. I feel at ease just doing things in movement. Yeah. That is one thing. Oh. Uh, uh -huh. But I think most importantly is to make them, to make it useful. Mm -hmm. How can of we use this in a normal conversation? How do you think the 15 second generation gets all this material? Do you think that the more concise we are, the better? I, well, okay, um, uh, I wish I was younger for that reason, yeah. because I, uh -huh. there's things that I do not understand. And yeah. uh, I try to be precise and concise. Mm -hmm. There's things, that just, on the other hand, there's just things that you cannot see in 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, how am I going yeah. to explain this in 30 seconds? And uh, okay, I can't. Yes. I can't if you don't want to speak. Mm -hmm. super fast you want to be understood you want to yeah. be you know so mm -hmm. sometimes and i suppose it happens to you the same thing you just think of ways or okay how am i going to explain the three the four conditionals now yes. do i make just one video or do i make yes. four different videos because mm. I, in 30 seconds let me tell you i'm not mm -hmm. going to be able to explain them all with examples yeah um and it's true that sometimes I look around. I look around and I see other people who are funnier mm -hmm. or people. And I said, okay, this is useful. Okay, mm -hmm. the things that they teach. But um, I, I, it's, it's very hard because the language yeah. is it's vast and extends. Mm -hmm. And it's not only expressions. Expressions mm -hmm. is one thing. But yes. you need to link the expressions with a, with a verb mm -hmm. it, or other structures. Yeah. So... That's why I kind of I want to make it a little wider. Yeah, I agree with you. Out of the four abilities of English, which is your favorite one to teach or to work with? I well, the easiest, mm -hmm. the easiest, not my favorite. The easiest is uh, grammar. Mm -hmm. My opinion, because uh, yeah. the thing is, a grammar is uh, mm -hmm. uh, is the bones, the bones, the scaffolding. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, that's you have to cover yeah. that. Of course, mm -hmm. you know that there's exceptions. Mm -hmm. There's the grammar, but then there's exceptions. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and and I know the the grammar very well, mm -hmm. so it's relatively easy for me. Mm -hmm. uh, now, um, I do enjoy. Um, mm -hmm pronunciation and conversation. Now that I find it a little more, uh, a little harder, I have mm -hmm. to say, mm -hmm. because, well, conversation is one thing, but pronunciation, um, there are people who are not so good at it. <laughs> it's harder for some people to get it. Or yeah. it's, uh, that's what I found more uh, difficult or complex. Yeah. Do you think it's because of the linking sounds or something like that? 
I think uh, sometimes people are too set on what they read okay. rather than what they hear. Okay. And especially most of my students, not all of them, uh, mm -hmm. are um, from Spain. Most mm -hmm. of them. Uh, mm -hmm. It's true that I've got a few who are from Siberia, yes. uh, who are from Turkey. But of course, in, you know, in, uh, in Spanish is a language that you pronounce what you read. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no mystery or secret there. Yeah. If the letter is there, you pronounce it. If it's not, yeah. you don't. But and then and I think in Spanish is um, more limited in terms of sounds mm -hmm. because remember we only have five vowels, a, e, yeah. e, o, and in yeah. English there are many more. Yeah. Um, that is why it's hard. For some people to grasp the mm -hmm. nuances and the differences, mm -hmm. uh, especially it, in vowels, yeah. but not only vowels, the B mm -hmm. and the V, uh, the, uh, a lot. Yeah, it's the same thing in Portuguese. Why do you think, or not, that it, there is so much rejection towards grammar learning? What is your take on that? I think uh, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, mm -hmm. but I do think that uh, in we've had bad teachers. Mm -hmm. I'm not going. To, I don't. I, you know, I want to be gentle, and yeah, I think that we've had over the years in in schools, in high schools, we've had bad teachers mm -hmm. who maybe loved the language. They mm -hmm. were just there for whatever reason mm -hmm. they were there, mm -hmm. and. Um, if somebody who doesn't love the language mm -hmm. is trying to force the language on you, yeah. that is yeah. that is hard. And um, I think, from my point of view, what mm -hmm. happens, what's happened in many cases is that we learn the grammar, mm -hmm. which of course it's a, it's a mm -hmm. sometimes it's a dry pill to swallow because yeah. okay, yeah. And then we don't put it to use. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, if we just learned the grammar, please mm -hmm. let's put it to use. How do mm -hmm. we how do we, Sometimes, especially in school, maybe mm -hmm. um, classes are overcrowded. And if there if there's 35 kids, yeah. uh, believe me, not everybody's going to get to talk. Of course. <clears throat> That's impossible. Of so course. So you're, you're learning it, mm -hmm. but then you're not applying it. Mm -hmm. I agree. End. I totally agree. And as yeah. you said, you said something. You just hit the nail on the head just now. You said that grammar is the scaffolding of the language. So... I totally agree because you have to at least know the basics so you can work the language. What would be the advice that you would give my audience and your audience to keep them motivated to study English? Well, I uh, just knowing knowing that speaking this language will mm -hmm. open mm -hmm. uh, or has potential, but mm -hmm. will for sure yeah. open so many doors yeah. for so many not only, uh, okay, let's talk about jobs. Mm -hmm. Jobs, it's a big part. But yeah. if we, even if we don't take that into account, which is a huge part, you know, mm -hmm. speaking language is nowadays, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like it or not, uh, mm -hmm. essential if mm -hmm. you want to work. Uh, mm -hmm. But let's leave that aside. Let's, mm -hmm. even for entertainment, there are mm -hmm. so many things that you miss yeah. if you don't speak. It. Um, of course, nowadays, you know, um, young youngsters when they play video games and they play video games with other people yeah. in, an, in an, the other side of the world, and like, wow, they speak English. Mm -hmm. That um, entertainment, friendships, socially, mm -hmm. many times um, mm -hmm. people go to study one year abroad. Mm -hmm. How? I, I think it's just uh, it opens so many doors for you mm -hmm. in terms of uh, socially, mm -hmm. uh, intellectually. Mm -hmm. uh, it also helps you if you don't speak the language. Sometimes you go to a country uh, tiptoeing around it. You don't really um, yeah. submerge in the in the culture. You just mm -hmm. uh, you're there like mm, like a bird uh, yeah. looking but not understanding. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, I think it's. It's it's a key. It's the key to unlocking so many wonderful rooms. Mm -hmm. Money, as I said, yeah. uh, when it comes to work, but socially. Um, yeah. I am allowed to put my two cents in. I think that consistency 
is also something very important. I think nowadays it's easier than mm -hmm. uh, than ever to be thanks to internet. Yeah. It's so easy to to be yeah. connected. I mean, for example, on my phone, I listen to uh, to radios all over the world, yeah. and I have uh, two in the U.S., one in Italy, one in France, and we are exposed mm -hmm. to so many things. Yeah. Then, of course, the streaming services have opened. Uh, you know, so, I agree with you. So before we go to the rapid round game that everybody loves on the channel, I have one last question. If you had a chance to meet yourself 10 years ago, again, what would you tell yourself? I would say, well, uh, COVID is going to happen. <laughs> wow, that's a good one. I totally yeah. agree. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. I, say, I would say uh, mm. also don't think twice about yes. things, yes. for example, an example. I've thought about making videos. I've been thinking about it for quite some time, and I just mm. recently started. And you mm. like, why Why did you wait for so long? Yeah. I don't know. So, I th And I think this applies to many things. Don't think yeah. twice. You want to yeah. do it, do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Life is too it, short, right? Life is too short and follow your gut instinct. Yeah. If you want to do it, do it. Uh, otherwise, you'll regret it eventually. Yeah, yeah. And life is too short to be better to complete the sentence, you know. So now we're going to go to the rapid round game. I'm going to start and then okay. I go on the hot seat and you ask me your questions, all right? Okay. So the first question for you is languages are? Uh, awesome. Traveling is? Eye-opening. Awesome. I agree. The most beautiful word in Spanish for me is? Si. The most beautiful word in French for me is? Um, salut. The most beautiful word in English for me is... I did it. Yeah. I hope we don't say down the line, oops, I did it again, right? So <laughs> being a teacher is... Is very rewarding. Awesome. If I had to define myself in one single word, that word would be... Curious. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, well, let me ask you. I know th that I'm in the hot seat, but uh, what do you get out of that, um, teaching? Mostly friends mm -hmm. and my. I make a living out of teaching for 26 okay. years and also learning because I am passionate about learning. I learn from my students. I learn from my guests on the channel and i am crazy about learning okay. and seeing the good side of people i think that's uh the most important thing to me i agree and now you can ask your questions all right if you couldn't teach english you would be a translator all right what other language apart from english and portuguese would you like to master French. One wish. To keep teaching and learning. All right. Good. You passed the, the test. Thank you. We're heading to the end of the interview. And for mm -hmm. every guest, I have a sentence, a quote, or a takeaway. And for you is a takeaway. When I saw your content, I was really impressed. You are such an upscale teacher on social medias. That's really impressive for me to listen to everything that you have to say. Because you speak things clearly in terms of serenity. It's such a good conversation. We're not worried about time. So it was a an awesome interview. It was a huge pleasure for me to have this interview with you. And it was a huge pleasure to have you on the channel for this interview. It was really great. Thank you so much. 
I, I appreciate it very much. I thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Look, for example, I'll give you another example of rewarding things because, yeah. of course, when you teach and you and you post your videos out for people to watch, sure. and then you don't really know who's going to watch them, sure. where or it, it, it's a mystery. It's a mystery, mm -hmm. and but mm -hmm. and it's true that sometimes you get uh, thank you notes, thank you, very useful, or mm -hmm. I love this, mm -hmm. and. Uh, but, but this is a huge plus, the fact that you stumbled on, onto my feed and you saw it and you liked it. And mm -hmm. uh, now we're having this exchange. It's, yeah. it's been wonderful. So I really thank you for this. Uh, yeah, thank you again. And uh, I just want you to know before we go that now you have a friend in Brazil. Whatever you need me for, I'm going to be here for you. All right. Likewise. Thank you so much. So I hope everybody liked this interview. This was my friend Gab. Uh, all his details are going to be in the description box below. And see you guys soon. Thank you. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye, -bye. Hello, it's Rod's friend here, Gino from Real Everyday English. Sorry for interrupting your video. I just want to make a quick recommendation that you subscribe to Rodrigo's channel. He's an amazing guy. He's so humble. He's so dedicated and he creates absolutely fantastic content. Sorry for interrupting your video. Don't forget to subscribe. See you people soon. Bye-bye. God bless.